Hello. Hi. Hey, everyone. I'm Allegra Madsen, the program director here at Frameline. And thank you for joining us for uh, Frameline 45. And um, I hope that everybody out there enjoyed the screening of this explanation as much as I did. In fact, I know you did. Uh, I'm super excited to be here with the director and San Francisco's own Alex Liu. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. This has just been a blast. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I just want to jump right in. Like, what, 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 where did this film come from? What <laughs> did you make this film? And like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's uh, uh, it comes from my deep, uh, deep seated anger, deep rage, really. Uh, that that uh, you know, I spend so much time ashamed about something that, in retrospect, I really didn't need to. Um, and you know, it's been a long process coming out and. And as I started to come out and learn more about uh, good sex research, good comprehensive sex education, and learn that this curricula is not new, it's been around for decades. Uh, why is it not being taught in schools? And why did, why did my parents never get it? Why did, was no one helping us kind of manage uh, sex and sexuality? And then you quickly realize, you know, elected school board members are just not going to campaign on a platform of like normalize gay sex, normalize anal sex, normalize masturbation and oral sex. It's just a losing uh, political campaign and, and, and it's a you know political hot rod. So, so basically, uh, no one's teaching this. And I have a background as a science reporter. I have a background in science. And uh, so I thought, well, uh, I'm already interested in this. I'm already learning about this. Why don't I try to just talk to the researchers I'm interested in, educators I'm research interested in, and uh, divulge my you know deep dark fantasies and see see what happens. And, and the result is the film. <laughs> That's amazing, and I understand now why my uh, school board campaign failed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it is such a personal journey and it's incredibly impactful the way that you use your personal story to kind of connect on this like universal level like there's something that all of us can can share in your personal story or identify with you know uh so i was j wondering like what how did you decide that that you were going to be the narrative thread and like what is it like to share this part of yourself with with all of us yeah i mean there's you know i i clearly put myself on film and and you know my, there's there is that ego narcissism i think a little bit threaded into that a little bit but but i think at originally this was simply going to be um a, a collection of interesting interviews you know i, I talk to interesting people learn interesting things uh, maybe more like an episode of Nova than it was going to be uh, a personal film. But I'm lucky to have amazing crew, uh, Leo Neri, my co-writer, Brian Emmerich, uh, my DP and editor, who really pushed me uh, to think about how this message would land much stronger, resonate much more deeply if I was just completely open and honest about why I'm making this, the steps that led me to this point, and help actually create a narrative arc to co connect all these interviews um, and I'm so glad I did and, and pushed me to talk to my parents about this, maybe that maybe that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Um, and so, yeah, it's been I mean, I was, you know, the first time it came out, I was, you know, like, you know, literally puking, just so nervous how people would think about this. Uh, but the response and the feedback so far has just been uh, unexpectedly overwhelming. And, and so I think now, at least on the other side, on the other side of this. I can say that that um, you know I'm I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad that uh, people even related in some small part to, to my story. I mean, we were talking a little bit before. Like, I uh, wonder if you would share with us a little bit of the feedback that you have been getting, and and like, yeah. isn't it weird? We're in a weird. We're in our little Zoom boxes, and like, <laughs> yeah. this amazing film out, and it's a very personal one. Like, how are, how are you getting um, responses? Yeah. So, so I would say the first text I got when the movie came out. Uh, was my good friend Robert, who just had a kid. So he's a gay man who just had a kid. And he was saying, oh my God, this came out at the perfect time because my son is getting boners all the time and keeps playing with them. And I keep swatting his hand away because I, it makes me uncomfortable. I wish it didn't. And that was my first reaction. And now I can, now I just realize that, that, you know, we're sexual beings from birth to end and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. It, it's, it is an innocent pleasure and I should not and I should, you know, encourage that rather than shame that. And so that was one great thing that came out. The other, the other great messages we're getting on social media, email, is just 
you know, couples who've been together 10, 20 years, uh, who think, you know, who watch every five minutes after every new, they pause, they talk about it, they discuss things, they, they open up about things that they've never talked about before. And that is crazy to me that, that a film that we, we spend time on could actually do that for couples. And, and that's our big dream that, that people use this as a conversation starter. That, that was, that was our hope. Uh, and that, that it actually is, is, is hitting the mark in that sense is um, we're just so grateful for. So it's amazing. I mean, I, like I, I shared with you, I watched some of it with my, my tween and it, it really, it really is. It's a, it's a way, it's a, it's a little bit of an icebreaker. Like, yeah, you know. exactly. Sometimes it's too hard to actually directly say what you want in any aspect uh, with whomever. And so it's easier to have a third party mediate. So, so, so hopefully we can be that for some people. Um, you know, seeing you take this like, super thorough journey is <laughs> like <laughs> it's really inspiring and it shows that we all have a ton to unpack about sex and sexuality and just like layers of politics and ethics mm -hmm. and morality to peel back before you even get to get to like the 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 human personal desire mm -hmm. yeah what, what, do you have any advice for the rest of us who are like kind of just embarking on understanding and like peeling back all the layers to like yeah, uh, um, I, I would say the first step is 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 baby steps. You know, it's it's like uh, when I came out of the closet at 18, the idea of me talking with someone on a very public venue about my sex life uh, I was mortifying, you know. Uh, but, you know, slowly by slowly telling slowly more people, opening up that, that, that level of trust, you soon become fluent and it becomes then all of a sudden like not, no issues. So, so whatever tiny, tiny baby steps you can take. So, so it doesn't have to be about your sex life even. It can be about a story in the news, let's say, you know, that has to do with sex that you would maybe would be as comfortable to talk about tangentially about sex. You know, really the smallest baby step you can think about uh, just to kind of test the waters around how that feels talking to other people. Um, but I think the main thing uh, that I've learned, even though I am, am talking a lot right now, I, listening has been a big, <laughs> a big kind of lesson for me around um, how do you actually uh, find the people and and actually find the create the space that that allows you to be more open and vulnerable and honest and authentic. Um, that that if I want that from someone else, I have to be willing to show it often more than more ten times more. Uh, to actually sit and hold your judgments, hold your biases, you'll have them, but but to, to hold them and let someone just listen and hear their perspective, even if you disagree with it, um, to be able to give people that space. And, and the more you can then to put yourself, your ego aside and see kind of the, the journey that person's on, see the sexual beauty in that person, the easier it is for you to see that in yourself, in my experience, the easier it is for you to be kinder to yourself like the kind of your old other people. So I think those are kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now when it comes to how do you start to um, be that open, authentically expressed sexual being. It's really interesting because like uh, kind of what you're, you're saying is, is like, how, how do you, how, re, how do you have an intimate conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you function in the world open to, to intimacy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think is like uh, uh, one of the most detrimental factors to like healthy human intimacy? Yeah, and, and it, it it is the opposite, right? Silence, right? It's it's um, and and I think, you know, that, I mean, you could you could go really, really, you know, there, there's abuse, rape, you know, you know, but that's that is just so damaging, and traumatic. But I think on a general societal level, I, I think you know, taking all that into account. Um, it is the silence because you can't negotiate consent if you don't know how to talk about consent. You don't know how to negotiate what you want and your needs. Um, and so, and it starts really early, kind of like in the film, uh, Dr. Laura Batito says, and, and I get it, I understand that we don't have the fluency with it, but um, you know, um, maybe some of kids might be playing with themselves and you slap their hand away like my friend, or um, you know, you don't ever say the word clitoris. You know, that's something that I, that took me out that I didn't think about, but it's true, I think, now speaking with many of um, my friends with clitorises, no one said the word in front of them until much later, and they often had to discover it themselves. So, so really, just trying to, you know, there, there's a it can be hard sometimes to think between your a uh, fact versus an opinion. But things that are there and happen, people masturbate. You know, there are clitorises. 
a uh, vulva is different than a vagina and you should know the difference. Uh, these things we can say out loud and hopefully um, slowly, been slowly by, by saying the words, we can then get to a place where we can delve into the much deeper, more fun playground of sex and sexuality. It's great that you mentioned that. I've got some diagrams here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I now know a, a, a female or I should say the vulva anatomy, but I, I'm just, I, embarrassed to say it was a very recent uh, uh, discovery. <laughs> yeah, we all saw you <laughs> quizzing <laughs> at Dolores Park. <laughs> <laughs> Can I call these testes? <laughs> what what would your ideal sex education include, particularly for for young queer people? Yeah, so I mean, I think the basis right is validating that that though queerness might not be the most typical, it is completely typical and normal, you know. Uh, and um, you know, you know, I think. Most most people, right, regardless of queer, or straight, or however you want uh, to define that, um, most people just want to know that um, what they feel, what they desire, what they want to do, um, isn't wrong, right? So so really, just like again, validating and 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 saying all the things that people do, not having a judgment about it, right? Not saying you should do it or you shouldn't, it's good or bad, but that many people have find pleasure in these acts uh, with these different people, with multiple people, that, that it happens, uh, I think is a very just strong basis. And and though I though I when I think about it more and more, a lot of these things are already online. When I think about Gen Z, they kind of already get a lot of this. And and so we were kind of talking about this before earlier, but but it is the how do you then negotiate these things, right? I think ultimately what we want to know as adults is how do I have good sex? How do I actually find pleasure in a safe way? You know, how do I actually um, feel good? Uh, and how do I make sure my partner feels good? Um, and so, and, and ultimately it's through communication. So, so I, I don't know, I don't have a good answer about the specific curricula, but the more we can focus that situation around that framing, I think um, is ultimately what all of us want, right? This safe, healthy, uh, pleasurable sexual interactions. Absolutely, absolutely. Get a little my Sorry. Okay. Um, I wonder if you can speak to the impact of, of shame on you because you're the central character in the film, and maybe like, uh, or or the broader queer community, like how. How is shame like? How are we being shaped by shame a little bit? Oh, I, I think uh, I will always feel shame about my sexuality. Uh, I think it's a natural instinct that's been imprinted in my brain since very, very young, um, and it's unfortunate that that's kind of how I am. Um, but I think what's been helpful through a great cognitive behavioral therapist, through mindfulness, is just being aware immediately when it's shame. Because uh, for so long, I've my, my initial reaction right is to repress, to suppress, to, to to do anything but to not feel that shame. But now to understand that it'll always be a part of me, um, but I can either let it destroy me or I can learn to live with it. And so shame for me is something that I, I, that I will always struggle with, I think. Um, but it's now something I can talk about, I recognize, and I know um, is, isn't uh, the end of the world. So so. Uh, the, and the more and more I talk about it, the less and less it, powerful it is. And the more and more um, I feel connected to others. So, and that, that's the thing that will destroy shame, feeling strong connections to others. So um, the more and more we can identify and talk about it in all the pernicious ways it sneaks into your life, uh, the better. Uh, I don't I don't know if you'll agree with this assessment, but m maybe. Uh, something that I loved about the, the film itself was the way that you... Um, you wield humor throughout. Like humor isn't really used as a, a deflection. It, it's like you're using humor as a tool to tackle this topic head on. Uh, and so I was wondering if you could like kind of speak to the role of humor in this film and like humor itself in in combating that shame. Oh yeah, it was, it was a very conscious decision. We spent a lot of time making sure we always saw the lightness to, a, to what could be a very heavy, heavy topic. Um, 
because that's what we want sex to ultimately represent, right? It's a beautiful, fun, lighthearted uh, experience. And we wanted the film to re reflect that. And I think, you know, if you define humor as kind of that, you know, the, the best humorous comedians in my, in my mind are people who can speak these, uh, these unspeakable, before unspeakable truths, but say it in such a plain way that, that it really reframes it for everyone. Uh, and laughter is kind of that immediate release of tension that we all were feeling that's being released at the moment because we're like, yes, we all are the same in this crazy absurdist way that humans are absurd. Um, you just can't help but feel community with the people you're laughing with. Uh, so, and again, you know, that's the best way to kill shame is to build a community. Uh, so, so humor in that way uh, is, is a, we think a great tool to get people to, for at least a moment, to forget about the things that, they think divide us and, and actually think more strongly about the things that connect all of us, regardless of our backgrounds. Um, yeah, it's it's funny the way that you even talk about I mean, it, it's kind of sexual in a way. It's like <laughs> totally, <there's> yeah. <laughs> building tension and then a release. And yeah. then, like, it's it's completely uh, you know, I think uh, some of my 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 most joyful moments, fits of laughter have been during sex too. So you know, it's a fun, awkward, uh, pleasurable experience for everyone. You know, at its best. <laughs> Um, what is something that you shared so much, you had, there are so many experiences that, that are in the film, but like, I'm really curious, like what, what's something that didn't make it in? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's uh, so many amazing experts we wish we could have, uh, brought into the film, but, but they simply just didn't fit the exact narrative that we were trying to go for. Um, but yeah, I think that the one thing that we really wish we had made it in, uh, we spent about a week with a group in Provo, Utah. Um, and basically it's this woman who has created this amazing gay teen center uh, for teens in this very conservative community put right across the street from the Mormon church. And she's just totally dissolving kind of the, uh, pre the barriers, the boundaries that the previously existed by just showing uh, people in this community, giving them, giving gay kids a space to be themselves, to bake, to sing, to do homework, to do whatever teens do, and show the community that these kids are just kids, you know. And and by doing this, uh, she's Mormon bishops now come over. They hang out with the kids. They're going through their own kind of reevaluation of the things they've been taught. Um, and so, really, just kind of. Um, the, the one thing that I, we wish I'd put it in more, but it just didn't quite fit was just how, how people are changing the cultural values around sex in, in their communities. I love that. It's kind of like, you, you, you know, it, 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 it's not, not necessarily your job or our job to, to, to complete social change, but it is most definitely all of our jobs to participate in it. Yeah. As much as we can, even little, little by little, yeah, it all adds up. Um, you know, all right, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Okay. Alex, your father was the star of the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are hilarious and charming, but he is musty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally kidding. Right? No, 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 you're right. <laughs> what advice, if, if you have any, for anyone wanting to be more open with their parents about sexuality, anything other than, I'm making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you good. Let's talk about sex uh, icebreakers. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you don't have the safety of a camera crew there to, to record that experience, uh, for sure. I, I think, you know, I'm lucky to have the parents I have. You know, when I came out of the closet 20 years ago, the first reaction was, I'm so sorry you, you could, didn't feel like you could tell us sooner. Let's, what kind of counseling do you need? Let's go make some gay friends in the community. What do we need to do? So, so I knew kind of already up front that. That, that they were, and they were willing to sit down in front of me on a camera. You know, they're just, they're, they're very supportive and warm. So, so I, I recognize that not everyone has parents like that. Um, and, and maybe don't even want parents like that. So, so I think, but if you do, if you want to start these conversations, I mean, the most common refrain we hear from parents, that's a little heartbreaking, but I totally get it is, we were waiting for you to start, or we were waiting for them, you know, you to start. And I, or I, I'm totally willing to have these conversations, but I just didn't know how to start it. Um, like I said before, you know, I, I think it's 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 baby steps. It's talking about um, something in the news. It's talking about Little Nas X's latest music video. It's talking about Cardi B's latest video. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you, I, you know, and 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 slowly but surely, you kind of can, you know, 
um, test the waters. And like uh, Julie Metzger says in the movie, you know, we are probably equipped, you know, the most open, loving, warm human being, parent to child, we're only equipped for about one, two minute conversations, you know, you know, maybe 10 at most. And then we move on to the next, you know, this is so, so thinking about it in those bite-sized pieces, right. That, that I think for so long, we've thought so long about, we need to have the talk. Um, and it's really just slow build, you know, brick by brick, you kind of build the foundation to be able to have all sorts of different conversations. Uh, but you got to start with one brick at a time. So, so to really just think bite-sized baby steps and, and go from there. Well, I know that you are on the East Coast, so it's getting late for you, but I have one question. Yes. It's a question that I'm sure everybody is asking you now because you asked everybody in the in the in the film, how what is sex? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I I'm grappling with that uh, every day. The, the the question, what is sex? But but I think at its base, uh, the definition I'm at right now is just just pleasurable moments of human connection. You know, so so sexual intercourse is definitely one end of the spectrum. Uh, but a pleasurable conversation is also on that spectrum. You know, I'll, I'll say that I've had conversations where we never touched but felt more sexually intimate than when I've been fully penetrated. So, so I think, you know, it, it's, it's really broadening the idea that it's, that yes, genitals, pleasure, connection, physical touch, all that is part of that. And, and it's a very intense, intimate, wonderful part of it. Um, but, but sex at its core is just really about, you know, forgive me for me cheesy, but two souls connecting in whatever way that is. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I am at right now. Pat on the back, compliment, all that is sexual. Um, I know I said that that was going to be our last one and I really appreciate that, that definition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It, Cause it ties, it ties into this, like how much of our world is kind of built in this, like. It is sexual, like even humor. It's all like this. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Release and connection. But we do have a, a quick question from yeah. the audience. Please. Um, yeah. The, so the question is uh, how to have an affirming conversation with a with their child about masturbation, uh, but also explain that there are boundaries um, about when it's appropriate to masturbate and when it's not, without 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 imbuing it with shame. Yeah. So I think. The way that it's been explained to me uh, by Kristen Gilbert, who gave a great definition of sex in the film, uh, I think most kids can understand public versus private sphere, right? Um, like you pick your nose in private, but you don't pick your nose in public. It's kind of a similar concept. Um, and I think, you know, for the most part, you probably don't need to go into too much detail about masturbation, but simply affirming that it exists, that your body part, your body will feel good. Uh, you have a, a, a possibly a clitoris or a penis that is built for pleasure. And when you touch it, it feels good. And that's fine. That's great. Um, do whatever you want. Um, but again, um, some people would get kind of weird uh, if you were to do it in front of them. So that, and that's fine. You have to respect that just like you wouldn't pick your nose or poop in front of them. Uh, so uh, hopefully sign that. So, you know, keep it in your room, whatever you want to do. It's fair game. Yeah. yeah I, I kind of love that. Like just because it's private, doesn't yeah. mean it's shameful. Right. Those two things don't have to be mm -hmm. synonymous. Um, yeah, well, thank you so much, Alex, for the time, for the film. Oh, thank you so much. This is a dream come true. Joining us, and I, when you were in San Francisco again, I hope that we get to, to meet in person. Oh, please, I would love to, yes, for sure. Absolutely, well, have a good evening. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight, and Thanks, um, keep enjoying uh, Frame Line 45.